Hello Super Friends and welcome to DC TV Talk. This is the show where we talk all things Supergirl, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow and Black Lightning. And in today's video I'm going to be reviewing Supergirl Season 3 Episode 14 otherwise entitled Shot Through the Heart. So let's get into the review. So Supergirl has been on a very long break of around three months time and I didn't really remember that this episode was coming back until they released the promo about a week ago. And I was like, oh yeah, the Supergirl's still around, it's still happening, we're about halfway through the season. So we got this episode, which is episode 14, Shot Through the Heart, which was plagued to be a very win-centric episode, and a win-centric episode it was. The episode opens up with a karaoke scene, which, you know, is nothing new to the Arrowverse. Uh, we've seen plenty of karaoke scenes before, especially on The Flash. Uh, but this, uh, it was just a bit silly. I mean, it was just a very silly opening. I mean, I did kind of enjoy it because I do find it quite funny when we have all the Supergirl characters just being normal people and just being regular humans. And I did find it quite funny when James was on stage and doing that big romantic song and wind shouted, take your shirt off. That was a really funny line. Um, it, was a, it was a little, just a little silly scene to have at the start but just you know a bit too silly considering of the tone of this episode now the story of this episode is that win's father is actually found dead in prison and win's father is of course the toy man and this was a very shocking revelation to win as seeing as he never had a good relationship with his father when he find out when he finds out this news he's not quite sure if he, how he feels about it he doesn't quite know if he should feel anything or should he feel sad or should he feel you know happy that this horrible man has now died and this cuts to the funeral scene where we see uh, him just very quite violently throw the dust on, on the grave as it goes down. And this is where we see Laurie Metcalf show up as Wynn's mother, Mary. Now, Laurie Metcalf, you'll know from many things. Um, most recently, you'll probably know her from the film, uh, Oscar nominated film Lady Bird. She was also nominated for Best Supporting Actress in that film. So this is a pretty big talent to get on Supergirl. So this is a pretty big moment. And basically, she comes up to him and starts trying to reconnect with him. And this is where a bomb goes off inside of his grave and kind of ruins the whole funeral as his con as his coffin explodes and then we go back to the deo for a bit so laurie metcalf is win's mother and you find out that she actually left win i mean we already knew this previously we didn't really know much about win's backstory but this is one of the things we do know is that how he's kind of abandoned and uh, you, f you see that his mother actually did leave him and this is kind of the first time that he's seen her in, in 20 years and this was a pretty big moment and this is they're all kind of chilling out at the deo there's a brief little attack from these flying monkeys and this is when we realize that there's someone actually working um under the toy maker and is that or the toy man is actually trying to kind of carry on his legacy but we'll get to that in a minute but this leads to a much better scene where we actually have two really good scenes in the deo between win and his mother the first one where basically win is telling her you know you didn't show up now or you didn't show up back then why are you showing up now i didn't you know i needed you back then i don't need you now why are you showing up now it's just pointless and he is right and you do believe it and i think jeremy jordan did a fantastic job of that performance and i was really excited for this episode because i really like win and i just feel like he's always been kind of pushed to the side on supergirl so it was really nice to get a very win centric episode and jeremy jordan just hit it home and then we got another scene after the flying monkey attack where we see him bond for a little bit and this is where we actually get the revelation about um, what really happened where you know basically Mary was trying to take her and win away from from the from the toy man and he actually crashed the car into a ditch and actually threatened to kill win and this was a big thing and it was actually meant that win was put into the police um, you know he was taken to the police and I really like that scene because it's just these really emotional moments and I think that both the actors really pulled it off so well and I actually think they were very believable as mother and son and I really enjoyed those scenes they were just really emotional I think they were really quite sad you know Jeremy Jordan was making me tear up a couple times in this episode um, and I, I do feel quite connected to his character and I just think that those scenes really just nailed it and I really like the conflict between the two characters because they're both right in their own senses but they can't you know quite see each other so basically win is right in saying that his mother shouldn't have left him but then when you look at what her what his mother was put through and why she did it it's actually quite believable as to why she would abandon him even though she wasn't necessarily correct in doing that so you have these two characters coming from different points of view who are both right in their own sense of the word and they do kind of find these common grounds and obviously they do bond further throughout the episode but i thought it was a really nice moment i thought these two were easily the mvps now, there is a side story in this episode where we see that uh, Merrin Jones, I don't really know how to actually pronounce it, Merrin Jones, something like that, John Jones's father, basically, is actually dealing with some form of dementia. Now, we see that Alex goes around to the Jones's household to have dinner with Jean and Merrin, and this is where we see that Alex is a bit suspicious of Merrin in terms of what he's going on, and we saw this in the, uh, in the synopsis for the episode. 
and you find out that he is actually got some kind of form of dementia or Alzheimer's, the Martian, the Martian kind of variant of it, as Alex brings up his granddaughters and he doesn't remember them. And this is a very important moment, and we actually see, you know, Carl Lumley, who I think has been very good this season, I really like his character, I think, you know, he, he's been played off as a bit more of a comedic character this season, but to actually bring him down to this level was really good. And he actually just kind of lashes out on Alex when she says, no, you need to tell John, you need to tell him, you need to, you know, he's your son, you need to let him know about all this, and, you know, Alex was saying, if he asks me about it, I don't know if I'd be able to lie to him. And this is where, you know, he kind of snaps at her and he sends her off uh, out of the house. And it was quite an emotional scene. You can see that he just wants to protect Jean, but he knows deep down he should tell him. And it's just, it's a really emotional scene. And this does lead into the end of the episode where we see um, Jean go in there and he starts talking to him. And we don't actually see him tell him exactly, but then obviously we do see Jean walk into the bar afterwards. And he's looking very upset, very emotional. And Alex goes over and hugs him. And you can tell, obviously, that's what happened. It feels like there was something cut there. I know Pagey brought this up in his video, too. But it feels like something was cut there. Like, you know, he's just kind of there. You don't really see anything be said. And then it just kind of cuts to the bar scene. And it just kind of feels like there's something missing there. There should be something in the middle. But, I mean, we get the point. You know, we get the gist of what happened there. Now, I know this review's a bit all over the place, but this is just the way it's worked out in my head. But this episode was a bit all over the place, let's be honest. Um, we do see earlier on uh, when Wynne and Mary are working on, like, dissembling that toy. We do see that she finds where it's actually being manufactured. And she literally just takes a gun and goes there by herself. Quite a silly move when you think about it, but what can you do? And she goes over and gets captured by the villain of the episode. And this is where it gets really quite silly in this episode. As we see the main villain who I don't even know the character's name because they don't give the character a name. She is simply a maintenance character who was in the prison when Toy Man was in the prison. And they kind of had this bond and she, you know, he kind of taught her everything he knew. And he wanted her to carry on his wishes and carry on his evil doings. And so she is targeting Mary and Wynn. Now she gets captured, uh, Mary gets captured by this character. And this is where we see you know this kind of get broadcasted to the DEO of course and we see uh, Monel, Supergirl, James and, and Wynn all go after her um, together and I thought this was actually quite cool to see them all go out there together like Wynn obviously doesn't really get to go in the field that often so that was nice to see him go out there James actually you know seeing him go out there with his shield that was quite nice too because Guardian has pretty much been non-existent this season uh, although I'm not the biggest fan of Guardian you know I would like to see more of him and then obviously you have Supergirl and Monel, and I think that this was a really cool scene. And they do get split up. You have Supergirl and Monel together, and then you had uh, James and Wynn. and it's basically just this big action scene inside of what is essentially a big toy shop manufacturer. Now the fight itself is very, very silly. Like for example, we have like these tanks, just like these toy tanks, obviously just chasing after Wynn and James and firing everything, and it's extremely kind of comedic with them. And then we have this giant you know animatronic dinosaur just attacking Supergirl and mon -El. and it was just it was very silly it just because the problem with this episode is while that fight did have some cool stuff in it like for example I think mon -El was really good in that fight I think mon -El, you know one of my biggest complaints with mon -El this season has just been he hasn't had anything to do and he every time he's in a fight he just kind of stands around but in this he actually had some tactics and he actually fought very well and effectively and I was like that's the mon -El I've heard about that's the mon -El who's supposed to be this grand leader of the legion of superheroes that's what I've wanted to see so well done mon -El. he actually impressed me this week um but that overall that fight was just incredibly silly and this is the biggest problem with the episode this is so tonally inconsistent it's hilarious like literally this episode had such a dour tone in the promo you know the fact that it's Wynn's father's death and it's this very kind of tragic thing and you know he was quite a he's quite a creepy and eerie villain and that's what this kind of portrayed but then and this episode does have moments like that like for example when this villain character takes supergirl and puts her into a packaging and tries to sell her like a live action toy like that's just really weird and creepy almost like you know it's kind of like the supergirl version of the doll maker that was an arrow it's just like this really creepy thing and but then you have like really funny moments like the karaoke and some moments with Mern Jones and then some people are uh, some moments in this final fight that are just really silly and over the top and don't quite work. So I don't quite know what they were trying to go for in this episode and that's the biggest problem. I don't know what this episode was trying to be and therefore it's hard to judge it. Anyway, at the end of the episode we do see mon -El go up to Kara and reveal the big secret that, uh, that uh, Imra had been keeping from him. Which is that, you know, the reason why the Legion are actually in the 21st century 
is that they didn't crash. It was actually Imra and Brainiac 5 actually chose to crash in this place because the third world killer, otherwise known as Pestilence, actually evolves into Blight, who is of course the main villain for the Legion of Superheroes in the future. Now, this was, for me, a very weird reveal. I kind of expected it to be something a lot more personal, a lot bigger, because one thing I don't get is, why would Imra keep this from Monel? Now, you do say that, obviously, you know, Monel does reveal that, you know, because Monel would think he wouldn't want to come back to this time because of everything that went on with Kara. But at the end of the day, I feel like Monel, being the hero that he is, and especially in that time, he wouldn't let that stop him, especially now that he's back here. He's kind of just getting on with it and obviously you can see he does still have feelings for Kara and he's still very much you know now that he's back in her presence but I just feel like it's a weird thing to keep from your leader especially when it's not that big of a personal deal it's actually a pretty big thing to stop this big threat and it could just basically just end whatever they were fighting in the 31st century so I found this you know to be very weird but on the other hand I think this is very exciting because Pestilence is the final world killer we haven't seen her yet and I think it's going to be very interesting when we do see her and also the fact that she involves into Blight, which is a very big Supergirl slash Superman villain from the comics, is very exciting indeed, and hopefully we might get some cool stuff with that. But what did you guys think about this episode? Tell me in the comment section down below what you thought about it, you know, what you liked, what you didn't, let's have a discussion about it. I think that this episode was quite a disappointing return. I remember when I first finished watching it, I thought, yeah, I quite enjoyed that, but then as time's gone on and as I was writing down my notes for this review, I was just thinking, now nah, this episode was weak. Uh, it was just, it was very disappointing, you know, especially because I was really looking forward to this episode. I think the promo was really great. I think the promo was actually quite fantastic and it made me really excited for it. But this episode, just with loads of the elements it played with, the villain was quite frankly awful. The final fight was very silly. This moment had very silly moments in it. I think that the tone was all over the place and it just made the episode feel very messy and like I said, very disappointing. So thank you guys for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, please give it a like if you did, it'll help me out a lot, and share this video with anyone and everyone you know who loves DC TV and get them to join the community. And as always guys, please subscribe for all of your latest content on Supergirl, The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Arrow and Black Lightning. And with all that said guys, I hope to see you again in my next video.